Hi Cubies, here's Alexandra and today we want to paint another warjack. This time is it, it is a protectorate of Manoth warjack and as I said before in the unboxing video I will not paint him in white. In my imagination um, they are some kind of uh, crusaders and uh, for that instance I like to have him all metal. Well, normally I would uh, spray paint him in black for that instance, but since he is already primed in white, so I would stick with this primer. The first coat of color is uh, my dark steel mix. It's a 50-50 mix of Bolka metal and Chaos Black. And I will cover the entire model with that. And I'll be back in a second. Ta-da! Now we have a full metal war jacket. Uh, war jacket. <laughs> so, what I do now is the usual. Taking bottle black and giving the whole model a good amount of wash. To cover all the recesses and nice shadow. Also what this provides is uh, when here and there are tiny little uh, white spots left, uh, the wash will take care of it. So this might take a while, also until drying, and I'll be back when this is done. After a few hours of drying time, he looks like this now. A real nice dark metal tone with good recesses. So. What we'll do now is dry brush him with bold gum metal. <coughs> Just take um, some old brush, wipe it off on a paper towel and then go over it. And dry brushing the whole model. And keep in mind to leave a little bit of the dark behind in the recesses. Just like that. <clears throat> and yes, of course, if you uh, should have base coated the model in black previously, you could you could have done this here as the first step. But well, like I said, this model was primed white, so I had to go some other ways around. But that doesn't matter. In the end, it will look the same. So, my idea for this model is, like I said, uh, um, imagining that the Manoth warjacks are bright and shiny polished metal armor when they're new out of the factory. <coughs> but this will look kind of boring. So I thought, well, I will do something different with it and I will rust him up. But I won't go so extremely rusted like, uh, for example, at the Crix model I've painted. No, I want him to be rusted like uh, he was hit by a corrosion spell from a Crix Warcaster or a Crix Defiler or something like that. <clears throat> and in order to do this, we will go with several steps. And well, this dry brushing here in silver and vodka metal is one of it. So I'll finish now the dry brush job and be right back. After this dry brush step, we will do another one, and this time with chain mail. But a little bit lighter than the bolt gun one. Also very easy. Just go over the main big parts. You don't have to hit now every single detail. <coughs> you won't see it uh, that much anyway afterwards, so you don't have to be 100% exact here. Just 
slight indication of highlighting this metal. Just like that. Okay. I think that's enough. Now we will go for the last highlight step with Mithril Silver. Again, even more upper parts now. The front of the blade. Then here the middle of the shield. Here this arm part. So front of the shoes a little bit. <coughs> I think for the metal that's quite enough. So if you want a, a whole metal covered model, that's it. Ready to go. Finish the base. Done. <laughs> but well, you know me. That's not done for me. Now we will start to rust things up. Be right back in a second. Ta-da! And we're back. What I will do now is mix up some pigments with alcohol. For that instance I use Vallejo Pigments Burnt Umber for the deepest rust. Just take a little bit of the pigments, put it onto my deep palette. <laughs> then I use alcohol to liquefy this. and make some kind of a wash out of it. So, now I take my brush, mixing it up. So, and what I will do with this stuff is the following. I paint in all the recesses with this stuff. Like I said, I want uh, a nice corrosion and rusted effect. And well, this alcohol pigment mix will make the perfect rust. <coughs> so, but uh, this is pigment, so don't worry that you uh, will overdo stuff because, well, <laughs> like here for example, I dab the whole thing in it. That doesn't matter. You will see later what I mean with that. So be a little creative and paint this up in the pigment. Be right back. As you can see, after drying, this uh, pigments give a real nice matte tone in brown all the metal areas and now what you see here behind is a mixture of two pigments uh, dark red ochre and burnt sienna from Vallejo pigments and now what I will do now is well guess what doing the same as before mixing it up with alcohol Why I use alcohol? Well, it dries faster. <laughs> it's easier to work with than with, with water. And now I will also hit some random spots inside the uh, brown areas. Not everywhere, just here and there. To give it a slightly different tone to the rust. Well, because uh, rust is brown and orange tones and it never has <coughs> the same color over and over no it is some spots brown some spots orange <coughs> and so on so just play with it and make it nice and interesting and random And 
after that we need a Q-tip or a makeup applicator. I will let this here dry now. And like usual, I'm back in a second. And there we are back. <laughs> As you can see, the oranges are now also dry. And like I said before, Q-tip. We will make it a tiny little bit wet. And what we will do now is scratch off some of the excess of these pigments to make it even more random appearance with these pigments. So just go slightly over it and remove some of the extremely pigmented areas of the miniature. So. <coughs> There's also too much. And now you can really restart to see the highlights on the miniature again. And also these big blobs disappear now and leave a more natural appearance to the rest. And with a couple of strokes <coughs> we have managed to make it also very nice and interesting corrugated surface. So, I think that's almost okay now. What do you think? Hmm. There. Yeah. I think that's looking good. Interesting rust effects. And what we will do now is make this even more interesting by adding another color. I will use now a brass tone. I will start with the good old handy dandy tin bits. And then I will look out for some areas that well, could need a little bit different color. For example, ah, this uh, mask thing he has here. This looks like the perfect candidate. Just paint it in. So I will search out some other areas and I'll be back in a second. What I have chosen as areas are here this uh, little mammoth signs, then uh, this area around here, around the head, a little bit at the feet. So, and this little vents here and there. What I will do now is highlight those areas with the good old dwarf bronze. Just slightly going over it. Also a very easy step, nothing hard about it. So 
So, and now <clears throat> I will go for some final highlights uh, with a mixture out of dwarf bronzer and burnished gold. So that it is even more shiny and of course we will corrode this also like I've done <coughs> previously on other models I will simply use now Vallejo model color blue green this one here make a wash out of it so, very, very thin color paint mix, something like that. <coughs> and then I will slightly tap it here and there, oh, it's a little bit too much. Here all the cracks and this turquoise gives the whole miniature some more colors. And after that, the only thing that's left to do are the eyes. And for the eyes, I think a uh, good old rat will do. <coughs> so for that, I'll use a dark red tone. This is a mixture of Macrite red and black. Yes, I have pre-mixed it in a pot. I will paint the whole eye with it. Like that. And then I'll use blood red. front half of the eye so now I need blazing orange or if you don't have an orange, just mix some yellow into the red. For those of you that know the color we are, yes, yellow plus, or, uh, plus red gives orange. And I will paint it, oops, I hope you, yeah, just paint the front part of the eye, the very front part. Like that. <clears throat> and then we need a little white dot in the back corner of the eye to make it more three dimensional. Same on the other side. And ta da! The whole wall check is finished. 
I will finish up the base now with a basic job. Just dry brush the shield a little bit, adding sand, colorize it a little bit, grass, and I will show you the end result. Be right back. So, the base is finished now. It is still wet, but anyways, that's the finished model. I hope you like that look, and we see us in the next painting tutorial. Or next video. <laughs> See you. You're Alexandra.